Hey guys, if you don't know where you come from, don't worry, I'll show you now. Let's go. Let's go find out where we come from. We have a National Museum of Theater. Gradually, it's collapsed. So, and then we form Rift Valley, which was started from actually outside of the African continent, from Syria, and then the other one is from the Gulf, the Yemeni, by Ethiopia in two two as the northeast and southwest massive. So most of the Ethiopian massives are concentrated around here and then here, uh, mostly in the northwest. Southwest, as you know that around, approximately around here we call it Vasta uh, Gen or Vasta Shin, which is 4,553 meters above sea level. Of course, there are lots of mountain chains around the northern parts of the country and the southwest parts of the country as well. So it's the most rugged country. And then, Around here in contrary, approximately here, we can find as well uh, the lowest point in the Earth, yes, which is negative 160 meters below sea Yeah, we call it Dana Creek Depression. It's a depression. And then, of course, there is an active volcano here as well. So, when you come to the fossil, the prominent human hominid, Lucy, she was discovered from here. Yes. She was discovered in 1974. Yeah. Uh, she's about 3.2, as you can see. 3.2 million years old. But not only her. There are lots of human hominid which was discovered from this area. We call it Lower Tawash Valley. But as you can see, RD, RD is also, you know, this from here. Yeah. So she was not the oldest human hominid. And then we have also hominid by the name of RD, Piti Cascade Abba, 5.8 million years old. And then there are lots of stone tools who are also discovered from here. Mm, the other side is here, we call it me, what, sorry. Lower Omo Valley, Medina Wash is here, okay. So from those sides, lots of human hominid animal fossils were discovered. Okay. So this is very important as well. From this side and this side, as you can see, Australopithecus and Dominicus is the name of the hominid. Early Homo, that's Homo habilis. And the most important one, the Sapia. So, Sapian Sapian were also discovered from this land as well. You know that this is the father of modern humanity. Yes, according to him. 
or you should vary. So um, that's what makes it your best card of mankind. Because uh, this is the oldest Homo sapiens branch so far. So we are known as Homo sapiens according to paleontology and evolution theory. So the ancestor is not to So from family, his family, his race dominated Africa. I will show you. There is a map there. And then uh, migrate out of Africa in search of fertile land, resources, and water. So this is very important, as I mentioned. So almost all the fossils were discovered from the rift. So the fossil it goes all the way to Kenya, Tanzania, to Mozambique. Any question? Not at all. <laughs> So this is a graph. So this dome, the chronology is the morphology. You can easily determine what type of this is. This is, for example, this is more than crazy. This is like us. Mm. 
advanced, as you can see, very advanced. Short, yes. Yeah. And then this is smaller, the two. And then, uh, so it kept balance between the two fiber bone and then the spine. So that's enabled her to be erect like us. Which means she was fully upright. But when you come to here, you see, flatter. There is a strong bone in between the two. This, which was forwarded, especially the, the middle one. Yeah? And strong. This is strong as well. Yeah? Yes. So that's why chimpanzees are C shaped bone. We call it quadrupeda. In other words, if you put a very hard object around your body, you cannot stand this. You see the middle one? Very strong. So she was in between the two. See? So it's run according to this size. It's evolved from there. Yes. So that's why this is very advanced and very Prominent unit or special. In other words, that's what makes us human. Is you know what I'm saying? Yeah. What makes us human besides is walking in a bright posture, walking in a bright posture by two legs, what they call it, by pedal, and then. No, that, that's very important in order to sex as well. Why you call her a woman? Why? You know what? Because the female yeah. has a broader purpose relatively to the male because of in order to get a baby. Yes, you understand? Yeah. <laughs> So that's the first one is pelvis. The second one is can you differentiate which one is male and female? Let me guess. Ah uh, yeah, she's first. I don't know, How but uh, I think he's a male. They are married and she's fat and he's tiny, that's why I said <laughs> <laughs> By the way, this is Jimba. Uh, very, very few are married. <laughs> so, but, you know, the signs, Lucy Arti is uh, our scrolls relative of us. Yeah. So they were imported from that species. And then, so technically, they can easily differentiate by the size of the teeth, especially the canine teeth. You see the canine, there is a big difference. The big difference is the teeth. Yeah, especially canines are longer for the male. You know why? It's designed for fighting. <laughs> you know the reason? The wolf for the wolf. <laughs> yes. They call it sexual dimorphism here. The male also many females as a wife. So, polygamy. <laughs> we are talking about chimpanzees, okay? The world. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So they were fighting each other, the males. Competition for the resource, competition for the woman. So that's for fighting as I mentioned. You know Chimada Babu Babu or Chimada Monkey? It's found, yes. Chimada Babu is uh, one of the called war of an ancient monkey. It's rare and in far uh, yeah, it's Our international uh, Babu is yeah. strong. The males are very big and very charismatic, very just here and very very big. And the women are relatively small. And they had the male shark canines. So they were always finding each other. So always males are grouped. So they are socially grouped animals. This is how the scientists differentiate. So size 
and these these are very important. For example, in the case of those who say, for example, the first one, that's the first, or oh, what do you call it, the first one, over there, is the oldest human hominids, uh, the oldest primitive human hominids. They found only teeth and then fragments of hand bones. It's very difficult to differentiate because it's a main species of the So if you find it, if you like it, find these, you can easily differentiate. If not, if you get just uh, like a these and then a partial skeleton, it's very easy. This is our beloved Lucy. My baby's like, smile sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> this is her teeth. Yes, that's very good. That's you know, teeth, as I mentioned. This is a wisdom teeth. You know what wisdom teeth mean? Our last molar. When we are at the age of adults, the last teeth When we are we are really in the So this is uh, very important. So wisdom, on a rough knee, she was an adult when she was dead. This adult. So it's very difficult to know precisely age when she was dead, yes. but according to the scientist, she was younger than me, maybe 20s or 30s, because her molars, other molars, is not worn out, like the old woman. Yes. So we are going to talk about that, and then there are final bones, it's a shaft of the kind of deep that's never going to so this is fragments of bones which was discovered by an American and a few other young young researchers and are led by an American professor, Professor Donald Manson, and that she was discovered in 1974 from the northeast part of Ethiopia and that is known as Hafaz or Hadar Spacer and used under 40. She's old. So this is her. So, as I mentioned before, she was very tiny. Yes. You guys are similar, but <laughs> they look like sisters. <laughs> tiny. <laughs> okay, let's see. So the faded color, what we have, represents the actual bone. You see the brown color. The other is they call it missing ink. So you can see a brain size, size, brain size much smaller than us. In other words. The average of us is 1,250. It's very important to brain size. I will show you the development of brain size. What about this one? Before her, crocodile fossil. And then the one exhibited at the back is the smallest one. Uh, that's the muzzle, only the muzzle of the Nile crocodile. They call it Nile one of the very dangerous crocodile species in the world, especially inside the world, because of the size. Size, in average, just one of the average, five six meters. It could be about five meters long. Uh, and the other reason is because of the number of teeth. The number of teeth in 
other it forms is the core, of course, is the eighth conical part. It's conical in shape like this. Oh, so is that just one? Yes, just one. You can imagine 64. <laughs> so that's what makes nine. It looks very small, yeah? That's only the Damascus. So you can imagine. Yeah, five, five meters tall. Crocodile fossil. And then the one exhibited at the back, it's the smallest one. Uh, that's the mazel, only the mazel of the Nile crocodile. They call it Nile crocodile. One of the very dangerous crocodile species in the world. Especially inside the world. Because of the size. Size in average. Just one of the average. Five, six meters. It could be up five meters to this meter long. Uh, and the other reason is because of the number of these. The number of these in other forms is the core, of course, is the eighth conical part. It's conical in shape like this. Oh, so is that just one? Yes, just one. You can imagine 64. <laughs> so that's what makes nine. It looks very small, yeah? That's only the Damascus. So you can imagine. Yeah, five, five meters tall. So it's actually common in sub Saharan African country. As you know, that more populated in the southern parts of Ethiopia. In Arbaminj. Yeah, there is a lot of crocodiles in Arbaminj. Specifically in the Lake Chamo. Mostly the tourists come back on a boat and they happen to see them in the night. So in the photo of the boat, you can see the night crocodiles that are out of the lake from the sandbars of the highlands. Actually, now there are two and a half kilometers long currently. But it could be up to four. Now there is a crocodile farming as well there. Yeah. Specifically, it's a crocodile farm to export to export. Yeah, you should. Um, <laughs> very beautiful place. I'm so <laughs> So, So, as you can see, some of the pictures here are very small. Yeah. Some of them are big. Yeah, for sure. them, the horse. You see, it's very small. Yeah. So, so, we are talking about orange. Some of the animals were so hard and big. Some of them were shrinked. For example, in the case of the horse, they call it equide or equis, just the family name. So, nowadays, the current horse is very big. There are lots of factors behind it. So, some of them are smaller. For example, if you see the white hole, they are big there, mm -hmm. and then comparing with the current one. That's why it's huge. That's very big. Yeah, that is huge. This is actually uh, Bovide or Bovis. So that's a family name for gazelle, cows, antiques. So you can see at least here, Bofno. This is the ancestor of Bofno. And then you can see the tragelum, it's an antelope species, okay? Just tragelum is the same thing. And then this is a bushbuck. Bushbuck is a very small antelope. We have still in Ethiopia endemic, endemic bushbuck. Yes, it's even new for this. You know, subak. 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 You can see, they call it minimic bushbuck. Because it's endemic, I guess. That's why the name is endemic. So, 
Japanese, which is then my Japanese. It's human, only evolution of human. Inhabited by the Aborigines. Do you know Aborigines? No. The tribe of the tribe of Aborigines. You can, you can wait for it to look like, okay? You can read it. The first inhabitants of this continent were blacks. They are known as the tribe of Aborigines. Still now, nowadays, there are lots of history behind the behind the tribe of Aborigines. Actually, those colonized by British and vanished. Now, nowadays, Aborigines are very few, but it was inhabited by them. And then uh, the journeys continue to the East, from Middle East to different parts of the world, in different time, in different times. Yeah. So this was actually later on found from here, from this continent, from Europe. Homo Florences as well in South Pacific, but it was disappeared. The only surviving species in the world which is known as Homo sapiens sapiens, or in Ethiopia, we call it Homo sapiens idart, which means mother of all, well, the father of modern humanity. Yes. That's what makes this, this, this continent. Specifically, this country is a cult of mankind. Not only those special events. Now you can see the development of brain size. Look at his brain size and then his eyebrow. And then look at me. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the father of. That's the old repeat of him. At least you can compare his predecessor, you see. This is 600,000 years before him. Okay. Yeah? Before him. And then you can compare his eye socket. Look at him. That's very deep, yes? Yeah. About the eyebrow. Very zigzag. Yeah. Yeah. Brain size is that one smaller and smaller. This is big. 
with an interface is that one is broad. This is short. This is really good. First, or in other words, the contribution of Ethiopia to the other world. This is a big gift for Ethiopia to the other world. Coffee. Yes. Yeah. Coffee was originated from this country. It's from the south part of Ethiopia, from the southwest, better to say, around here. From Kappa. You can see the similarity. Kappa, Kappa. was originated from here. Nook, you know that Nook is domesticated by the Ethiopians. It's an oil series. Which is a healthy oil too. Now it is very expensive oil. Yeah, but it's a healthy oil too. It's healthy, yeah. very tasty. Yes, this is the This is a very tiny grain, yes. It's a very healthy. Yes, uh, we have at least two types. Brown and white, of mm -hmm. course, not only two, two, two types, there's lots of research on it, but we can categorize into two, white and then brown type. Mm -hmm. It's grown in the highland parts of Ethiopia, you can see the time, it was domesticated during the first millennium BC, mm -hmm. during the time of um, actually pre axomite even before Axum. Actually, this is the secret of Ethiopian strengths. Yeah. How about this? Insert. Are you serious? We know insert. I'm bragging. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get it. For the banana, it's for a foreigner. It's not banana. Yes. We claim they are very different. Whenever you see, you know, banana, it's very what you call it. Uh, skinny and long but insects are very big have a big stem and then it's watery from water okay? so that is you can it's make made, amazing made food by, by insects <laughs> goes back to here at least 8th century before Christ uh -huh. or oh, they call it before common era yes mm -hmm. which was start was the center of uh, one of the oldest kingdom known as Damat yeah. Damat so you have as a center whenever you go here now currently you can find one of the real temples of Africa, the oldest real temple of Africa. And then the, after those pre Aksumite states, another civilization was emerged. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we call it the Aksum Kingdom or Aksum Civilization. So that was the base of Egyptian civilization, we can say that. Yeah. So they they actually control the parts of Eritrea, northern parts of Ethiopia. They had an outlet. It was a port, we call it Adulis. So, via to here, they monopolized both sides of the sea, Red Sea, controlled this area, and then parts of Arabia was the part of the Aksumite Empire as well. So, they grew a very giant empire in Africa, and then continued up to 8th century AD. Then, power was actually collapsed and then shifted to here. Lalibala. Mm. So actually the former name was known as Roha and then named after the coming of this king, Lalibala. Yeah. So the town is named after after the king. They built 
actually 11 Rocky Wind Church. Yes? So, this is about Mother Rock. They are actually one of the wonders of the world. Then, after La Libala, after you know that the dynasty, the dynasty is known as the Zagwe dynasty. Yes? So as after a succession of uh, succession of power, power is shifted to Gondor. Then Gondor served as the capital of Ethiopian emperors. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that. Gondor was a third capital of Ethiopia. Wow. Yeah. It was you know established by King Fasilides in 1632 as a capital, and then ruled Ethiopia from here. Yes. Then after Gondarian Empire, mm. you know, shifted to Addis. Mm. We're talking about only the permanent settlements. Oh, okay. Before Gondar and Addis, there are lots of mobile capital for Ethiopian kings. Especially during the medieval history of Ethiopia, mm. there was a strong war between the Christians and then, uh, the Muslim Sultanates. Mm. So they were here and there, most of the Ethiopian kings for uh, in order to secure trade routes, yes, for in order to get a strategic place to war. So uh, this was, you know, uh, this was established in 1887 by Benedict II entitled Tullius. Yeah. So we have permanent force capital, Axel, Ladibala, Gondor, and then Addis. Yes. Good. So this is tell us about actually uh, the Aksumite towns, okay? uh, state what it was flourished before the coming of Aksumites. So you can say that this is the first literary language of Ethiopia. Wow. Is that good? Uh, no. no. It's yes, not the first. <laughs> What's that? What is that? No. Do you know? Can you read it? It looks sad. Except it looks good. Here? No, it's more like here. Ha? Ha, call it. Okay. Which, which ha? Hammer, okay, hammer. Okay, hammer. Which means I don't know how it is. Okay, hammer. 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 Okay, Bluetooth man. <laughs> <laughs> this is Bluetooth man. Man? Yeah. 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 Sorry, so that should, should be uh, this one? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's bad. obviously no. Yeah. This is bad. Even the what gates say that bad gate. 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 Mm -hmm. Gate. Mm -hmm. Le. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes? It doesn't look like le. Le? Le. It does not look like le. Is that the scale Yeah, that's one. Ah. Yeah. So this is the first literary language of Ethiopia. We call it Sabian. Okay. Sabian. Bala, we call it Saba. Bala. Inshallah, I'm going to it's translated here. Ha 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 ha. But I thought it's the first language was good. There is adaptation between Sabian and Giz. Okay. Uh, first, it was this one. This is, by the way, literary language now. No vowel in between the two. For example, I can read it. You can read it, obviously. You can read it because you know Giz and Amharic. You don't know Giz, I know. Yeah, of course. But Amharic is the type. So, At least. so you can easily read it. Yeah. So, Alamaha. Always start from the bottom, yeah, from right to left, and left to right. So some of the alphabets are quite similar with that Gigi's alphabet system, which is that Gigi's. So Amharic is derived from that. And then Sabian is first, then Gigis, then Amharic. So, you know, the problem is you cannot easily the meaning 
you know? Yeah, it doesn't know. Because there is no vowel between the two letters, the two alphabets. Ala makaha. What's the meaning of ala makaha? Ala makaha is moon and sankash. Moon and sankash. So it's talking about the organs and ghosts. So this is ritual or offering for different castes and goddesses. So this is altar. No altar means. No, I don't know. No altar. Altar like this. Altar then. Goddess. So they 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 put blood here in an offering yeah, for different castes. Obviously for this castes and goddesses. So there are mono. There was monotheism. Your monotheism, Allah, is what Malik commanded. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, Allah Taala, she was one of the goddesses. Yeah. <laughs> so it's translated here. Actually, it says, "God grant the child to young." Whether you believe or not, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So it's a she was a symbol of fertility. Yeah, she She's was goddess. This <laughs> calamity is just a challenge. I will show you what the calamity is. Does that mean so? All right. So she was known as uh, locally they call her Hauti. Hauti. You know, you can, you can there's a similar you know Hauti. Yeah. How it is in Tigrinya. So, how it is is the place where she was found. Mm. So, it was a pre Aksumite state. Mm. So, it was a sea or a beach like her. Mm. So, now you, you already believe she was goddess, yeah? yeah. So, that's her throat. <laughs> so, it's this animal is sacred for her. This is beautiful, by no. the way. Do you know this animal? No. Do you know this animal? Uh, which one? This animal. Goose. What? Goose. So, Walia is most important and sacred animal. You know, sacred animal. You can see here. Can you see what it? Here. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So this is a G. identity mark. Mm -hmm. You know what identity mark? Means? Yeah. To identify something, you have to have a mark. Yeah. <laughs> so it's ownership, right? Yeah. In, in a present term, just. Uh, Brand? Branding. Yeah. <laughs> they, they had a branding technology during in that, that time. So they brand on the body of their cattle. Yeah. yeah. So make sure you can see different symbol of it. There is Sabian description on it. Mm -hmm. Look for example the second one there. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Very symbolic. It's it's not symbolic. This is scale. Scale, you know, scale? What's scale? Misa. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we know Misa. So that's uh, copper alloy. So this is copper in the alloy, like metal. Mm -hmm. Is that a beauty thing? Yes, it's all the names. 
knife. Mm, you can see agriculture implements, pottery, bow. So you can imagine this is nine up to six century before Christ. That was used by Ethiopians during the time of Damascus. So it was collected from Iha. Iha from the chamber of the grave. Even they live life after this. Yeah. Which means it's, yeah. it's a grief. Okay. Yeah. Grief, <laughs> really. You know, life, you can it's, it's like, so they, 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 but they buried mm -hmm. their belongings with them. With them. Mm -hmm. Like ancient her home. Yeah. yeah. So, that's already great to show you. This as well. Can you see number 22 here? Yeah. yeah. Oh, we were really, really wet. You know, beating, beating back a lot. It's just a lot of water. Many tires are just under the yonker. That's fine. Ah, so that it's written here. Right? Mm -hmm. Figure of horse and then scarab. You know, scarab you follow when beaten. Is this a tire? Scarab. Scarab, Egyptian. Uh, life after days. Maybe take another ritual. Symbolize Just a belief. She is amphora. Amphora used as a container for wine, but it was belongs to the Holy Roman Empire. So, a Sumite imported wine from Holy Roman Empire. As I mentioned, they have already currency. They have coins. They had gold. Gold. <laughs> Most of the coins are gold. It was a center of gold. Still, uh, they have gold, right? Uh, even uh, <laughs> it was used as oil lamp. Oh. Oil lamp. It's mm -hmm. So it's a must. It's very artistic. This was lamp? Was lamp. Wow. Dog hunting ibex. Yeah. So they put what you call the oil used as a an oil. This is beautiful. More than beautiful than the one we have. Cemetery, so that uh, indicates the ultimate civilization of the Aksumite Empire. It's actually in order to glorify the king. So it's the, one of the largest monolithic monuments in the world. You cannot find 20 meters tall, 
monolithic state in the world from a single granite stone. There is not what you call cement, plastering materials, it's curving. It's curving. There is a quarry area just three kilometers from a stele, and then they transport it from that area to here in a direct. You can imagine what kind of engineering scheme, what kind of transportation were used in order to erect. So they already know what, what they call it, the, the, the modern engineering. Yeah, it's a record in Guinness book of uh, record. I don't know Guinness, but it's one of you know, UNESCO sites. It's one of the UNESCO sites. I mean yeah. UNESCO. Yeah. So, that, by the way, the largest one is already fall down. As you can see, it's already break. That's 500 tons. 500 ton the weight. And then this is actually the era how did the, the Aksumans use the house? Three floor. This is the current one. It's now as Dongu, the palace of Dongu. So whenever you go in Akso, you can find this. And this is the architecture model. of church which was scattered all over Tigray. Yeah, most of them are cave church and semi monolithic church. And then more here as you can see in, uh, in La Libana most of them are rock what you call it uh, monolith, fully monolithic church. Islam and Islamization in Georgia. So there are lots of Islamic states were in Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah, she has been <laughs> So, Islam was introduced here through this policy. And then they formed their own town. You know, that is fortified town, it's a walled town, lots of gates. Direction. It's considered to be a holy Islamic site. Some would say that it's the fourth holiest place in Islam. So, but not only that, as you can see, they get these pinnates, Nora, Harla. Harla is in Tuhara, between Hara and Reda. So those are archaeological remains. In fact, it's near to the present city of Shawa. Society. They 
erected stone as a great map, symbolize something, heroism, and so on. So there are about in Ethiopia 160 stone stone, which was found 160, which was counted by archaeologists. And then the other expert, <laughs> which was categorized into three, then other. Some of them are we call them anthropomorphic. Anthropomorphic mean you can see human figure on this, like him. This one? Yeah. You can see eyes, nose, Yeah, it's mouth. a human. Yeah? Yeah? Are we just so? You see, there are lots of symbols on it. Some of them are, you can easily identify it. And then some of the symbols, you can note it's still made what mystery. It's hard to identify. It's okay. you, your family is from Buraji. Yeah. Have you been in Kia? No. So it it's belongs to the Solo, Solo Buraji. Yeah. So in Kia is the most well known. Tia. What do you call it? Tia stones the side. It's near to Addis. And then it's registered by UNESCO. And then you can see at least 36 monuments like this. And then some of them are, I'll show you, engraved in what you call it, Yeah. You didn't see Tia? She has been in so guys it's dinner time after one hour filming we so exhausted so we are about to have dinner there is a special salad in Addis so we went there and we ordered special combo salad the salad was delicious so we also ordered a two strawberry mojito so I'm gonna tell you the price the salad cost us 490 per and the two strawberry two strawberry mojito cost us 279 and the takeaway books cost us 30 per so which is like 800 per so the salad was like special guys you need to try it if you never try in Addis so it's uh, near to friendship hotel they actually have a different branch but right now we are in near to friendship hotel so guys, I hope you guys have uh, some information about where you guys come from and about Ethiopian history. So thank you for watching. I'll see you next one. Bye.